Hi everybody, welcome back to G-Bears Off-Grid Ways, homestead in the desert. And uh, yeah, we're looking at the uh, weather station here. It's a little early for shooting, but um, I want to get this done so I can get some other things done. And uh, I also have uh, uh, some questions I have to answer for Jesus Freak Jen, and I will get to that as soon as I do the follow-up on canning. All right, so here we are. This is what I got canned out of the uh, cucumbers and jalapenos. Okay, so these are still warm, and I, I finished these at uh, probably 11 o'clock this morning, and they're still warm. I also made myself a jar of uh, regular pickle juice so that I could have that. And a uh, good habit to get into is mark your date on the tops of your covers. Uh, you can always wash that off with uh, um, alcohol and a cotton swab. But, uh, of course, those people that are really into canning will tell you you're not supposed to use the lids more than once. You can reuse the rings, but you're only supposed to use the lids once. Well, I don't know about you, but uh, I grew up with people that uh, were a little bit more uh well it's less wasteful than that because unless the lid is bent or there's uh, damage to the seal i have no problem putting them through the uh, sanitizer and using them again and i've never had one leak all right so i got another set of jars in the um in the water well that they're actually draining right now and cooling but I just sanitize those so that they're ready to be used because next I've got four apples left from a whole bunch that I got from a friend uh, named Sharon and Steve, or the friends named Sharon and Steve. Uh, Sharon was the one that was there. Steve was at work, of course. But uh, nice apple tree in their backyard, lots of good juicy apples on it. So I did get some apples and I'm down to my last four. Well, she did contact me and say if I wanted more just to come on by and, and pick some more because there's still plenty on the tree. I'd like to do that, but uh, other things are in the way right now. So, what I'm going to do with these is because I enjoy apples down the line and nothing like having a, a scoop of vanilla ice cream with some sweet apples on top or uh, dropping them on top of some oatmeal or whatever. So, what I do with these is I'll peel them. I'll wedge them and deseed them, core them, and then I will get my light syrup going. And for light syrup, I use three cups of water to one cup of sugar. And then I'm going to bring that up to a boil and drop the apple wedges in there. At that same time, I'll have my canner, uh, not this one, I'm going to have the pressure canner set up on the stove here, all ready to go, so I can heat the uh, jars while I'm making the syrup. I'll get the jars hot inside of the unit ready to, to put the cover on. Then I'll put those in there and I'll put the, uh, well you want to boil the apple wedges in the syrup for a few minutes, just maybe two minutes tops. And then add them to your jars and pour the uh, hot syrup over the top of them. Put your lids and rings on and then process them. And the process for the Apples would be, uh, I think it's uh, eight minutes with a five pound weight. So uh, you saw, I showed you that little weight that goes on top of the lid. I'll take off the two big weights, just leave the little one, which is the five pound, and uh, that'll give me my five pounds of pressure. I'll, uh, I'll can those for the eight minutes, or uh, run those for the eight minutes after the steam starts coming out of the uh, top. And... Uh, They'll be ready to put away on the shelf so I'll have apples through the winter. And then maybe if I get some time, I'll run down and get some more. What I like to do is I always uh, keep some cinnamon on hand. As a matter of fact, there's another one up here. And uh, what I'll do is I'll take some cinnamon and I'll put like a quarter uh, teaspoon of cinnamon in each one of the jars to give it a little cinnamony flavor. One of the other things that I've been planning on doing, and it's been a plan ever since I decided I was going to be uh, out here homestead in the desert, is because the uh, weather out here is perfect for it, I was going to put together a solar dehydrator 
and I probably get that done this year because if I got fruit coming on my fruit trees next year, I'm going to be want to do some dehydrating on those also. And what what that does and how it works is basically you build a uh, a square building that that's pretty tall, probably ten foot tall, and you have shelves in there with screen racks that go in it so you can close it up. And at the top, you'll have a vent that you can control how much airflow you have on there. And you want a screen on there so the bugs don't get in. Okay, down at the bottom of it, it's all sealed off. It'll be sitting on a, on a slab so that bugs, insects, and rodents can't get in there. And then you dig a trench behind it. And you put a piece of culvert or metal um, corrugated pipe in the ground. And... You don't need anything to do big. Probably a, a eight or a ten inch piece will will uh, diameter will work, and you go out about six feet or so with that, and then uh, you put a screen on the end of that so nothing can get on the inside. You want a fine screen there so bugs and ants don't cr go through it. All right. Now what happens is during the day if you put all your slice your fruit and put all your sliced fruit on the, those uh, screen shelves that are in the unit and stacked. During the day, the sun comes out, and it'll heat up that ground and that pipe because you want the top of that pipe exposed. You can put it, even put a glass over it if you need more heat. You can do it in the winter. And the, it'll heat up the air in that pipe, and, of course, heat rises, so it's going to go up into that unit, and it's going to rise to the top. And you, then you adjust your vent at the top so that the hot air comes out of the top and carries the moisture with it. And uh, you can go back in a few hours and you'll have perfectly dehydrated fruit. You can also use that for making beef jerky. And uh, one of the things that I do is I make beef jerky in some small black barbecues. I've done that for years. I have friends out there that uh, used to sneak up to my barbecue when I was making the jerky and snitch a few pieces. And you know who I'm talking about out there. But uh, anyway... Uh, I'll be doing that and I'll be showing you how to do that down the line. Very simple recipe. Um, it's a, a uh, just basically preserving meat so you can um, carry it dry for long periods of time without it going bad on you. And uh, it's called uh, General Lee's Original Recipe is what I use. And I just named it that because... Uh, I always think about that old song, uh, we took a little bacon and we took a little beans when we fought the mighty British in the town of New Orleans. No offense to my British friends out there, especially you, Kevin. All right, so we're bypass that. Now let's get to uh, Jesus, Free, Jesus Freak Jen's uh, question. It was about the Tomcat rodent repellent, uh, wh what it is, where to get it, and how to use it, okay? So... This is the product right here, and I do recommend you buy this in the one-gallon container for $24.95, I think it is, at Home Depot. Um, you can get it on Amazon. You can get, get it online and ship right to your house if you want, so forth and so on. And a lot of people have been saying that they've been having problems with rodents getting into their car and into their engine compartments and causing damage. Okay, uh, I don't recommend that you spray this stuff in your engine compartment on your engine parts all right because it does contain i get down here to the active ingredients it does contain oils and even though they are peppermint oil cinnamon oil and garlic oil they are oils and they will cause damage to uh, rubber and plastic and that kind of stuff you don't want to damage anything in your engine compartment so what is the answer to that all right well this is what i do take an old tuna fish can and an old uh, cotton sock all right you're going to set, set the sock inside the can like that and you don't even have to be pretty about it just squash it in there then you're going to take your wand from here and this comes all folded up and and attached here and it it's really easy to fix uh, to set up so you just basically open the wand like that and then on top of the unit here it's got a dial you're going to have to plug this red thing into the top make sure you press it all the way down till you hear it click um, because that comes disconnected 
in this area right here with the wire all coiled up. All right. So then you you on the top here you've got off and on. So you're going to turn this to the on position. All right. Then there'll be a little tab sticking out the back end of the handle here for the battery. So you have to pull that tab out of there. I think it comes out right there. You pull the tab out and then that activates the battery. Now you got a child proof lock on here so they don't get it sprayed in their eyes or something. You can unlock it right there. And then you'll have to squeeze the trigger uh, initially probably for a good 10-15 seconds before the spray starts coming out. Also make sure that the uh, wand is set to spray there because if you turn it um, 90 degrees it'll be in the off position all right so you you got it in the spray position right there now you can squeeze the trigger and soak that sock down really well okay so this is going to be just like a uh, an air deodorizer but uh, you're gonna put this under your engine compartment now don't set it on top of the battery where it could slide over and cause a short. Don't set it anywhere where when you're driving, it hits, um, bounces off and hits the engine. Or you can set this in here and just remember, you got to take it out before you drive. Now, I just happen to have this beautiful little tray area here just above the uh, radiator. And it's got a flap here that keeps... The engine compartment safe it's got a hump here so this can't slide over and go that way and it's got the latch here for the hood so it can't slide over and go that way so now I've got that in there I can excuse me while I hold this hood up with the camera hand okay I put my uh, holder down like that and now I can close the hood all right that's it now the uh, the engine compartment is protected. Next thing I do is because most vehicles all come with undercoating on them, is uh, if, if the rodents are getting up into your vehicle, they're probably climbing the tires to do it. So what I do is I, I spray up under the wheel well with the spray and just coat the, the wheel wells. And then I, I spray a little bit on the um, axles but be careful not to hit any rubber boots or rubber hoses or anything like that. Just to put it on the metal down there. If it gets a little rusty, you're not really concerned because it's going to get washed off in the rain anyway. All right, now it does say that this stuff is rain resistant. Now remember, rain resistant does not mean rain proof. So you will have to replace it or re uh, apply it after a rain. So... Also, for the wherever you're going to uh, spray to keep the mice and rats out. All right, so I'm going to keep this handy because I'm going to go down and do another spray all the way around the chicken coop. I haven't had any problems with any, even the, uh, the ground squirrels going anywhere near the chicken coop or the garden house. But I have seen them coming over here and going into my gray water pit. And I've seen them out there on the road. Um, they, they kind of like head towards the chicken coop and then they make a U-turn and head the other way because they don't like that smell. So it does work. I've seen it with my own eyes. And uh, for rodent control, I can't think of any better way to do it. This is the easiest. Of course, I did give a recipe on how to make your own um, in a prior video. I think it was on the uh, September 24th or 25th, one of those two on how to make your own if you, you want to take the time to do that and stink up your house while you're cooking it. Uh, but uh, this stuff is pretty good. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't linger with an odor. At first, the, the odor is a little bit uh, bothersome, but then it, uh, it, it kind of goes away after a while. And it's uh, safe around plants, people, and pets. So don't worry about using it in your garden, around your plants, or anything like that. It won't hurt people or pets. Of course, don't get it on your your skin or anything like that. Wash your hands if you do right away, and uh, keep it out of reach of children so they don't spray themselves with it and get their get it in their eyes and things like that. All right, it's Tomcat repellents, rodent repellent, ready to use. Also important, shake the container well before each use. Okay, 
you do want to do that. Now, I did shake this as I was carrying out of the uh, storage area before I put it down on the table and did this video. So it was shaken up, but you do want to shake, make sure you shake it up and get all those ingredients mixed so you're not just spraying stuff right off the top. All right, that's about it, everybody. Uh, G-Bear, remind you to give me a thumbs up down there, please. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, don't forget to share with your friends. And don't forget to download or save this video if you need that information. G-Bear, signing off.